you know, talking tax with Tom Yamachika. This is Jay Fidel. It's Think Tech. We talk about stealth taxes today, pending in your state legislature here in Hawaii. Hey, uh, welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Well, we're at the time in our legislature where things have kind of gone from public view and are now pretty much in backroom discussions in the so-called smoke-filled rooms. Uh, this is where uh, the conference committees are appointed and meet, and then things happen to the bills that we may not uh, know about until the results are made public. But then only, well, that's, only that's the results comforting. we see. You know, we, you know, the legislature is taking a lot of heat on corruption this year, and you'd think they would try to rebuild their image. Uh, there was a piece of paper, piece of the paper the other day about how notwithstanding the decision of the Supreme Court on uh, gut and replace, they were trying to do it anyway, trying to get around the decision. I mean, really, who's, who's doing that PR? Because uh, they should be seeking transparency. This is the opposite direction, right? Well, I mean, the... Uh... Uh, the, the two bills that we're talking about in the paper were kind of really borderline on, you know, uh, whether they're related in, in subject matter at all. Um, like one of them had, uh, you know, started off with a, a bill to increase the TAT if we got so many more tourists that it wound up being a, uh, an earmark on the TAT. It still relates to the transient accommodations tax, uh, but... Uh, different aspects of it mm. so we're, we're, we're kind of wondering if you know that would be enough for a court to strike down and the other what was the other one again and i know that that, that was one of them but i forgot what the other one was about but i know which one we're talking about yeah well i you know i, I what i'm what i'm thinking is gee whiz um can somebody you know reel them in it's not the governor he doesn't reel them in um Maybe it's the president of the Senate and the speaker, but uh, they need to be reeled in. And uh, these bills wind up making much too much progress. But let's go to the stealth bills that, um, that, that impose a tax without saying it's a tax through the Department of Health on, on the, uh, the supply chain uh, for food and other non-durables. What are those bills about? Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, I call this show stealth taxes because it's a means of having the government charge money uh, and it's the, of course the cost is passed on to you as a consumer, uh, but you really can't see it as a tax. It doesn't affect the tax code. It's, it's hard enough you know, for us to watch the bills that affect the tax code, but then there's stuff like this that, that doesn't even do that. Um, this one is House Bill 20, uh, 2399, which establishes an extended producer responsibility program uh, that is designed to slap a so-called fee on anyone who imports or sells fast-moving consumer goods, which means anything non-durable, uh, food or drink, for example. Uh, the, so this is, this is on consumer packaging. Uh, the fee in the current draft of the bill is $150 for each metric ton of packaging material placed in the market. Now, how that translates to uh, the you know, individual consumer goods, we, we really don't know. Uh, I, I suppose maybe a fraction of a penny goes into uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the paper that wraps your burger. Uh, another penny or two goes into the um uh the package that the, the burger is placed in um this is unprecedented right there's no tax like this right now this is a brand new idea right it's a brand new idea now uh it it turns out that uh there was a an extended producer responsibility task force that was convened a couple of years ago um that you know some industry people uh, participated in and, and, they, and they kind of unanimously agreed that you know more study was required right but uh, uh, but this bill came through anyway so some people couldn't wait you mean the study wasn't finished it wasn't started <laughs> well, okay why, why couldn't they wait i mean what's the what's the political you know polit real politic reason 
for a bill like this? Who gains, who loses, who cares? Well, it's, it's probably part of the environmentalist agenda. We have these, these, these packaging materials that are, that are polluting our environment. Well, you know, we, we got rid of the foam. Okay, so they, they, they use, now they use paper. Well, you know, we, we, the, the, the paper it shows up everywhere too. So we got to do something about that. So that's, that's kind of where we're at now. So you see that in, in not only this, but also in other things like the carbon tax, which we talked about before. But, uh, you know, carbon tax is kind of more, I mean, that one actually is a tax and it affects the tax code. Yeah. So that one we could, we could see right away. We didn't, we didn't see this one. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, do you think somebody intentionally tried to get it by the, those who would oppose new taxes? Probably not because the, uh, the industry groups knew this, this came up and, and uh, the, uh, the industry groups testified against it. Okay. And, and uh, their view is that it's a tax. It's no more, no less than a tax and, and uh, uh, good for them that they spotted it and call it out as a tax, right? Well, um, the, the, that's, that's not what they said. I mean, they, they said that, uh, you know, geez, um, you know, our industry is already reeling from the pandemic and you're gonna, and you're gonna whack it again. Mm. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about public policy on this. Cause I think this is, this, 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 it's a case study. It's not just this one bill, it's a case study. Um, so here we are, and we have inflation, which is especially troublesome when you're talking about food wrapped in these things. Um, it's especially um, troublesome when you talk about the fact that Hawaii imports a lot of food and doesn't grow the food. And the state government has done little or nothing to incentivize new agriculture businesses, even though we've, we've talked a good game for how many 20, 30 years. Um, and uh, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, manuf not manufacturing so much as actually packaging and creating product here, you know, aside from the agriculture itself. Um, and um, I, I guess there's more public policy considerations. Those are the ones that, that, that strike me. Uh, so that if I were doing public policy on this bill, I would say, are you kidding? Are you kidding? In times of an inflation, as you said, in time of COVID, in, in times of restaurants going down, you can't afford a, the last penny. In times of um, you know a, a, a fail, a failure of sustainability on local agriculture, lo local uh, food, food packaging, or anything having to do with food. So you want to impose a tax from left field on food. Uh, you know, if you weigh and balance the considerations, public policy would forget about whether, you know, it's tax or not tax and whether. Well, I mean, the, the counter arguments we always see are ah, these these robber barons are lining their pockets. They can easily afford it. So let's, you know, let's go whack them. Yeah, right. The argument that the, that the, um, the taxpayer can afford it. So we just keep on whacking him and whacking him and whacking him. It's a bottomless pit of creative possibilities that are <clears throat> called tax or not called tax, which impose greater burdens on the consumer. That's what it is. And you'd think the legislature would be really busy in trying to incentivize agriculture, in trying to deal with inflation. This is the wrong way. <clears throat> this yeah. is the wrong and, way and, on and, both and, of those uh, issues. Not only that, but, but this, this new fee kind of harkens back to the, the general excise tax of the old days where it, when it was imposed on everything. And there was no like, um, uh, I mean, there, there was a possibility that would pyramid multiple times. So as, as currently drafted, this fee could, multi could apply multiple times in the economic chain, uh, you know, because it's imposed on sellers, it's, it's imposed on uh, you know, the, the, the person who uses uh, the plate lunch, the, the paper plates to sell plate lunches, and it's and it then uh, is also applied on the seller of the paper plates. And if there's somebody who imports the paper plates and then sells them to a middleman, uh, it's you know it's applied a third time, and and there's no different rate. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, who's watching the store? Who's the champion? Who introduced this bill? 
Um, let's find out. Uh, this one was introduced um, by a whole bunch of people uh, in the House. This is the House version. And the Senate version, um, Acacio Chen Gabbard Baker Moriwaki. On the House side, it was uh, about 20 people. What makes it so popular? It just sounds popular. It does sound popular. Well, it, it, it probably it's probably part of the progressive agenda. Uh, well, to, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the progressive agenda uh, in conflates with things that aren't really progressive. Uh, you and I know that. Sounds like this is one of those things. Yeah, the primary the the, the first introducer is uh, is Nicole Lowen, who you know, currently heads, uh, heads the. Um, uh an environmental committee on the in the house so what what actually how does this help the environment uh supposedly it gets rid of the uh the solid waste how how does it do that i, I didn't hear anything in the mechanics you described that would do in fact that uh well let's see um it assesses the resources needed to reduce the volume of packaging waste sent to landfills or power plants that burn municipal solid waste as a fuel by 50% and 80% by date to be determined by rule. So what they want to do is they want to, uh, they want to reduce packaging waste. And um, they, I guess, propose to do that by, by making it more expensive. I'm, I'm not catching it yet, Tom. I'm sorry. Because it's more expensive than... Then you don't wrap the hamburger in in, in paper waste. No, because uh, because people buy fewer hamburgers because it's so so damn expensive. And that okay, that that makes a lot of sense. So you get rid of the waste by taxing the paper goods that come in. Right. I, I, is that is there any indication of a logical connection between taxing the paper goods and getting rid of the waste because they're more expensive than buyers of these things won't use them, but they need them. They absolutely need them. And what's interesting is that they put that in the Department of Health. If if you don't have the the, the paper to wrap these things, that is that is a threat on public health. You need to have you need to be able to wrap them to keep them sanitary. No? Yeah, well it's the same thing, you know, it's it's the same kind of argument for the bottle bill, right? Um, you know, people are concerned about the number of bottles and cans. Uh, so they make the bottles and cans more expensive by adding the, you know, the high five uh, nickel uh, plus the one cent or two cents administrative fee on each purchase. Uh, so they want to drive down demand uh, and you know, reduce the number of cans and bottles that are sold. So this is probably following the same logic we're trying to. Did the bottle bill work? I think it did. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. So that's a, uh... You got to give them credit for following some sort of established pattern um, in the thought. Maybe it's experimental, but in the thought that if the bottle bill worked, um, then the wrapping bill will work. Oh. Yeah. The problem I have with the bottle bill is that the the uh, uh, the system is uh, as it had been run by the Department of Health was kind of you know uh, susceptible to fraud and was actually being preyed upon. Uh, and the, the, you know, the state auditor found that out. Uh, and then, you know, pretty much nothing, nothing was done about it. Let's, let's go to our second bill. Wait, before we do that, just one other thing is um, the Department of Health is the administrator on this, on this um, system. The Department of Health is, it does not have the administrative capacity um, to charge um, a tax or something that looks and smells like a tax. Uh, they would be starting up a whole administrative effort, a bureaucracy, if you will, by creating a mechanism to charge, to identify and charge the tax, and then collect the tax. This is not in their wheelhouse. What, is this, what does this mean in terms of public policy and fiscal policy? Well, I mean, they, they, they can do it now because since they, they're administering the bottle bill. Ah. So, so we can probably just tack it onto you know, the same folks were doing that. Okay, well, that, mean, that means there's a certain logic to that, too, then. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but there is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, we're trying to, you know, be reasonable and explore. Um, I, I think my, my biggest concern is the legislature should be 
trying to make it easier for restaurants. A lot of restaurants are going out of business right now, I can tell you. And COVID has done has wrecked havoc um, with um, the restaurant, you know, industry. Um, and agriculture is not growing. I mean, as everybody says, oh, it's a good thing, but the legislature puts very little money into it. Uh, we made we made a movie about that called uh, uh, "Scaling Up the Hawaii's uh, Hawaii's Food Supply," and and we really don't um, grow much food here nor do we incentivize anyone to grow much food here. And so if they want to spend time on trying to do, you know, something that will have a basis of public policy, um, then they really ought to look at that. That's much more important. Um, the other thing is um, this money that's collected by the Department of Health, um, where does it go? Does it go to some good purpose or in the general fund? Special funded. Ah, Special funded. Yep. Uh, so controlled you, by the Department of Health then. Right. So, same like the bottle bill. It goes to a different different special fund as the bottle bill, but bottom line is that the Department of Health gets suspended. So if you had your on this bill, before we go to the next one, um, on this bill, if you had your druthers, how would you change the bill? Um, you know, um, so that it it meets some minimum standard of um uh, contribution to the economy, contribution to this, you know, to Hawaii. I'd kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is Senate Bill 3040, uh, sponsored, this is an administration bill sponsored by our Department of Accounting and General Services. And it, uh, it deals with state procurement. So, namely where the state buys uh, goods and services that it that it needs right so it it, it it's a, a consumer like like most of us except it you know buys a lot more things in a lot, lot larger quantities um, so what what happens here is the uh, the uh, department of accounting general services is going to uh, come up with a an e-procurement system so they were going to do uh, some computer upgrades and get um, a method by which they can uh, go through bid solicitations and so forth over over the internet, which uh, part of which they already have, and pay people over the internet. Okay, and here and here's the catch: mm. there's a fee for doing that. Who charges the fee to whom? Uh, the bill doesn't tell us how much the fee is going to be, but it gives the bill gives the state procurement office the, the authority to set the set the fee to cover procurement system uh, automation costs. So, uh, so what that would cover is uh, the uh, an acquisition cost of five million dollars in the first year and one million to maybe half a million per year thereafter. Uh, in maintenance and licensing fees. Okay. And this takes me back to Sonny Bagwalia. Sonny Bagwalia, where they, they hired him away from uh, 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 GSA. He was a, you know, a management guy in GSA in Washington. They hired him and they said, would you please uh, take a look at our computer system here in the state? This is... Um, um, Under Governor Abercrombie, right? Abercrombie, yeah. And, and he couldn't uh, stop laughing. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it was a joke. Uh, Abercrombie says this was like a second coming for him, uh, that he could get this big shot in here and the guy would uh, have a staff and it was a public-private partnership. Some of the big, um, you know, um, billionaires in town contributed and um, they paid him a salary, got him a staff, had offices in the, in the Capitol building, as I recall. And uh, he was, he was going to make a study of, of how the state computer system was deficient. Well, we all knew that. Everyone in the state knew that. Everyone in the state government knew that. Um, but he, he spent a ton of money, millions, um, making this report saying uh, that um, the state uh, computer system was deficient, that it was old, uh, that it wasn't being supported by the original vendors, uh, that it didn't do the job at all. And it, it was stuck, you know, it was like over the hill. And um, he, uh, 
Niglon report. And uh, that was his conclusion that everybody knew anyway. And then he quit. Uh, went back to Washington. That was the end of that. I think uh, Abercrombie hired him at zero dollars per annum to be our computer representative in Washington, which was a way of saying that no, he didn't really quit. He was promoted. Uh, that, that was that was the uh, propaganda at the time. He was promoted, and, then, and and Abercrombie threw a great big party for him, and he was gone. And the report sits on the shelf, saying that the state computer system is terribly deficient. I don't think much was done about that report. And uh, if, if, if something was done about it, and this, I'm getting to the point, if something was done about it, wouldn't that properly have been all along the way, all along those decades where we didn't do anything to upgrade the computer system in the state? It would have been paid out of the general fund. You wouldn't have to create a whole new source of income for it. Just pay it out of the till. I don't understand yeah. why in Hawaii everything has got it. You got in order for you to spend money on things like that, you have to create a source for it. Take it out of the till. That's where it should come from. And now they're doing it again after yeah, that's, that's not what, having done it for a long time. Yeah, that's that's what Kai Tana's philosophy was. Um, but here, uh, you know, they're not focusing on the fact that you know an automated procurement system is going to save costs, right? I mean. It, it, it takes less money uh, to do electronic steps than it, it does to shuffle paper. But, okay. uh, and, and, uh, uh, and it's much easier to pay people using electronic funds transfers than it is All true. to, to We've issue known paper this, checks. We've known this for 20, 30 years. The business community knows this like it's, like its own heart that you have to keep on upgrading computer systems all the time. And you have to be careful and smart about it and not spend in the wrong direction. But ultimately, it will make your company more efficient, lots more efficient, um, you know, magnitude more efficient. So I don't know why the state hasn't done this already. It should have been doing this a long time ago. And as I said, I think it should come out of the till, not a special fund. But anyway, so... Um, no, I think you're, you're, you're saying what I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, that this should be uh, a general funded project, and uh, we, we, you know, people shouldn't be paying a tax for the privilege of of getting paid from the state. Yeah, if they, prov if they provide goods and services, uh, well, yeah, they're they're going to get taxed because that's what that's how a GE tax works. But and adding something else on top of it because you're, uh, you know, I mean, to be fair. Okay, it's not mandatory now, but that's the next step. I mean, I, it's written all over it. The next step is, is you know, once the, uh, uh, you know, when, once this bill passes, the next step is going to make the fee mandatory. So when the bill passes, you would, you would have an option of paying it or not paying it? That's right. Hmm. Why don't they just update the system? I mean, what's so rocket science about that? Well, they, they're going to do that anyway, but now with this bill, they're going to get somebody to pay for it. Namely, all of the... I'm, I'm still lost. I, I think that this is a core um, production mechanism in state government, you know, state government as a service, right? It's the most important part of the brain. And to have this thought process and this processing capability with computers which is everybody in the world does it from every continent. I don't, I don't know why we have to have what amounts to a tax on that. That's a, a core function of all government, including state government. No, Am I, I wrong here, Tom? I mean, no, you're not wrong. Yeah. I think this is something that we should be expecting of our government, uh, that uh, you know, they're, they're gonna get away from paper um, you know, for, you know, <laughs> lots of reasons, in, including, well, maybe we ought to, we ought to, you know, have them be defined as an extended producer responsibility, so they can they can pay, you know, pay a fee on their, you know, the amount of paper they use to push their, you know, push their forms. Well, you know, it strikes me that 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 report, which I'm sure made recommendations, the one by Sonny Bagualia, um, you know, has 
things like that in there. I mean, for the basic principle, you want to have a more efficient. In fact, Abercrombie himself said this. In fact, I have it on tape that he said this. Um, that, that if you want to have a better state government or a more efficient state government, improve computer system. So I don't know why we get distracted with a bill like this um, when we actually haven't done the job yet anyway. Uh, and my problem with it, in a larger sense, Tom, I'd like your thought, is this is the wrong road, creating a special tax for something that should be out of the general fund. Um, because um, there are a lot of state functions that the state should be doing. And now it's, it's a kind of precedent, isn't it? If you want us to do our job, you have to pay us special. That's right. And the, and the money goes into a special pot and, and is exclusively spent by the uh, agency that's doing it. And, you know, uh, they may or may not have some scrutiny by the legislature through the appropriation process, but it's designed to avoid the appropriation process. Just, hey, uh, we, we, we raise this money ourselves. You know, this is self-sustaining. You don't have to look at it, legislature. That's not the point. The legislature is supposed to look at all of the expenditures on behalf of us, the people. When Linda Lingle got into office, I was sitting on the High High Tech Development Corporation, the board, and her instructions to the board were, you guys have to find a way. This is a state agency, an attached agency to DBED. Um, you guys have to find a way to make yourself self-sustaining. You have to come up with ways to raise money. You have to act like a business organization. And then you have to perform your state duties and take instructions from my administration on what, what functions you should perform. But you have to raise the money um, to operate. I said, gee, that is a strange kind of approach, isn't it? A state agency charged with raising the money uh, to operate. But I think we have more and more of that in state government. And, and I think it doesn't really reflect the reality. State government has the power to tax, let them tax. State government has obligations to provide governmental functions, let them do the functions. But operating like a private business to raise the money to perform functions it is statutorily obligated to do sounds to me like a twist uh, on, on the basic concept. Well, I think we're, we're um, kind of uh, relegated to optics like that because of the reality uh, that we're heavily taxed as is. And, um, you know, if, if we, we get taxed heavily and the state government's not doing its job, so what's it gonna take to make them do their job? Um, more tax and, uh, and, and you know, let the government, let the executive agency do spend it as they want. I, 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 I'm not sure about that. Yeah, well, so you get a lot of little agencies all like little businesses raising money for their own, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you are avoiding, especially in this an election year, lest we forget, avoiding uh, raising taxes, because that's un unpopular, politically unpopular. So I, th I agree with you, we have very high taxes to start with. And now we find ways to tax indirectly like this, and like the packaging bill. Um, and it, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up. So we are not telling the public that we are raising taxes. Uh, and what's, what's interesting, too, is we already have containers, structures of tax, which we could apply. Um, you know, uh, like, for example, um, the use tax, uh, the gross excise tax, which is plenary. And if we wanted to raise money in a transparent way, we would use mechanisms like that or by the income tax. But, but we we're afraid to do that politically. In yeah, election. I mean, people have tried that before and have gotten all kinds of pushback. No. Okay, so, well, what's your, what's, they, your, what's your message on this, uh, Tom? I mean, this is, this is a really fundamental concept. And uh, I don't know if it could be fixed in the short term, but what's your message on it? Well, I mean, if uh, what lawmakers are trying to do is to avoid the message that voters were giving them when they tried to raise taxes directly, um, they, they really ought to kind of start listening again. 
because voters told them that they didn't want more taxes and lawmakers should take that seriously and not try to get around it by this, that, or the other artifice or strategy. Mm. You mentioned uh, in the early part of the show that there, were, that there were a lot of bills in the ledge that would indirectly or directly raise taxes. So the ones we've been talking about today specifically are not the only ones. It sounds like there's a whole um, onslaught of bills that would raise taxes on the people of Hawaii or that would raise other charges which are effectively taxes. Yeah. Well, I mean, th there were more. Uh, there, there are not too many now. Uh, it, it's come down, but it's it, it still kind of raises uh, the the question that we need to you know be diligent, you know, as taxpayers and look for this kind of stuff. Uh, and as you know, uh, for for a person in my organization, we've got to uh, redouble our efforts to call out stuff like this so people understand this is what's going on. Very important, the public service, and hopefully it will have a long-term effect and it will make our political leaders understand that fiscal responsibility is more than just raising taxes. You, can, well, quote, you can quote me on that, Tom. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we can. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, Talking Tax with Tom. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.